All right, guys, welcome back to another video of Shaman J. So this video is special to me because I do the um, the series, uh, you know, is it really worth it? And so in this video, I decided to use the 7 Pro to record the 6 A's video of is it really worth it? So you let me know how the quality goes and uh, let's see if we can make it the way full video without it shutting off. And you know, these videos are normally about at least 10 minutes, so we'll, we'll see how this goes. But... Um, we're going to get into this, man. So the, the Pixel 6a was released back in July of 2022 and we're in December of 2022. Um, yeah, it is December 15th, 2022. And this device was released around the middle of, uh, it was announced at, at the, uh, in the middle of, at the beginning of May, uh, and then, and then it got released in June in the middle of, uh, excuse me, the middle of July in 2022. So they they gave it some time. We heard, we saw the big announcements. We knew what was going on with it, and we got excited for it. So now it is time to talk about this device. Is it really worth it? So I'm going to shuffle again. Sometimes I go in an order. Sometimes I don't. But this time I'm going to start with the price. This device right here is $300 everywhere right now at the recording of this video. It is $300 no if ands, or buts, no catches, no nothing. The unlocked model of this device is two ninety nine pretty much everywhere and it's the holiday season, so they are going to sell this thing. They companies uh and Google will sell it at a discounted pr price and discounted rate because I've always spoken of you getting an out when you want to buy the big dogs, and some people just don't believe that to be true. But I believe that to be true because um, companies know what you probably should buy, <laughs> but they're going to sell you what you what you want. So let's start with the hardware and design of this device. We already know the price is worth it, but that's not enough. Let's talk about the design and hardware. Now, this device is replacing this device. This is the 5A, uh, and this is what their devices used to look like, and this is the 6A. It's a little bit smaller. It's got the new design of the 6 lineup uh, with this bar across the top and the two-tone colors. Now, I have a skin on here, SophieGuard.com. Be sure to get your skin from there if you want a skin. But this is what this device is replacing. And it's easy to go ahead and say, yeah, this is definitely a better-looking device. And the hardware feels just as good, if not better, too. But it's more than that. The design of the device is well made. So you've got this brushed aluminum sides all the way around, which I think is the best way to have a device. And then you got a, a plastic black back and you have Gorilla Glass 3 on the front of here. Now I did put a tempered glass on here just to give it a little bit more for the scratches that I, I don't want the scratches, but they definitely happen. So just bear that in mind. You feel free to spend about 10 bucks and put a nice glass on there. And this has been on here pretty much since I got the, the device and you know hey it's been no problems whatsoever now one thing they did do with this 6a 7a is they excuse me the 6a is they took away the headphone jack now should they have done that probably not uh, but they're getting into this tensor chip that's another thing inside we're going to talk about that in a little bit but you know the design of this device losing the headphone jack it's okay i guess because the pixel buds you know you can get a set of pixel bud a's right now for 50 bucks so you get everything for 350. I mean, if you really want to ball out, you can get the watch for $299 as well, the Bluetooth version. And you can have a whole bunch on you. Um, this is the LTE model, but you can get the, the Bluetooth model and have a whole bunch on you for $650. It's, it's just too good of a deal to pass up. But um, I'll try to remember to leave links down below. But I can go ahead and tell you that this device's hardware is absolutely nice. The design of this is really nice. Again, it has a stereo speaker setup, something you can't see. It does have a stereo speaker setup, uh, and it's got an in-screen fingerprint reader. Now, I loaded up a video so you can see the display. But before I do that, the hardware and design, mwah, beautiful, and it is totally worth it. So let's get into this YouTube video I paused and, and fired up here. This is one of my videos on my car channel. If you're not subbed to my car channel, please go ahead and do so. Uh, I put up all my content on my cars over there, and um, it's a lot of fun. So let's go ahead and switch this up to 4K60. Now this display is actually a 1080 by 2400 OLED HDR display with 429 pixels per inch. So it is 1080p, but it's gonna upscale. But just let's take a listen to the speakers and it's also, let's look at the quality of the screen. So 
So I think it's safe to say that these stereo speakers are absolutely great, man. No question whatsoever. And this OLED HDR display is is phenomenal. There is just a solid, solid display. It is 6.1 inches. And again, it's got 429 pixels per inch. So you are getting a beautifully put together display. Beautiful. It is, it's, it's a, can, that's the only way I can describe it. It's, it's phenomenal. This is totally worth it. So you've got a great design, great hardware, a fan, phenomenal display. Let's see what else we can talk about on here. The next thing I want to talk about is the performance. So this has Google's first generation Tensor chip, but I think it's tweaked. I really do because the Pixel 6 and Pixel 6 Pro were plagued with issues because of the software combined with the hardware because this is the exact same chip. But I still say it was probably tweaked a little bit because a lot of people had problems with the fingerprint reader. As you can see there, that pops right open with no problem whatsoever. They did add facial recognition to the Pixel 7 devices. You know, that's something that people wanted on the 6 devices, but that's okay. This fingerprint reader is working. You also have the option for other ways to unlock your device, but that was something that I got plagued with on my Pixel 6, not my Pixel 6 Pro. So this is something that I think if you are concerned about, now I will say this consumers, like regular folks, they don't probably know anything about that. You know, they don't even care. They just bought it and dealt with it. Probably. But some of you guys might've traded up to the Pixel 7 uh, and turn in your Pixel 6 because there were some killer deals like that at, at one point. Uh, but hey, I don't know. But I will tell you this, that um, the software experience on here is going to be great. It's going to be, I'm Pixel. It's going to be really nice. Uh, it, it takes care of your needs for social media in the best way possible. I mean, it's, it's we're in a social media age, so... Everything and every everybody, every, everybody puts everything online. And so if you're holding your phone all the time, like some people are on their phones constantly for social media and some people are on their phones constantly for work. So even though we're in a social age, work now requires social media, just about to make it. You need some kind of social media handle. And this device with the speedy processor in here, this has six gigs of RAM, uh, a couple with 128 gigs of storage, which is is fine for this price point. Uh, and it's because other devices have 128 gigs of storage and they cost 900 bucks. Uh, there's several out there. Heck, Google even had the phone I'm recording with is 128 gigs of storage and it costs 899 uh, MSRP. So, I mean, hey, it is what it is. I got the OnePlus 10 Pro, 899. I got the uh, iPhone 14 Plus, 899. All three of those are 899. They all have 128 gigs of storage. So this one coming in at $200 or $99 with 6 gigs of RAM and 128 gigs of storage. I think you can see why I feel like this is a good deal. So um, the performance on here is going to be what you think it's going to be. It's a Tensor chip. I've Look at this. is just speeding through this menu. But that's... The performance is more than that. Performance isn't just swiping through your phone like that and opening up apps. Performance is your day-to-day -day task. When I use this phone for phone calls, I don't have drop calls. When I use this phone for texting, emails, the keyboard input, all of that type of stuff flawlessly works for me. I don't have a freaking issue at all. Software and performance is running Android 13. It's going to get all the latest updates. You can customize it how you want. As you can see here, um, I can customize this how I want. So I can turn this off. I can turn off dark theme. I can have the colorful icons like this. You can customize these these devices now uh, with this material you that they have with ease. You've got widgets. You've got a bunch of stuff on here. So software on here is a go. It, it is definitely worth it. Hardware is worth it. Design is worth it. Performance is worth it. Screen is worth it battery. Battery life on it, this has like uh, just under 4,500 milliamps and it's 4410 or something like that. So basically 4,400. Um, it is great. I can make it into about two days strong 
when I start to get to two and a half days, because my usage, and remember, let me throw this disclaimer out there. Usage of battery depends on the user. Folks, we are all not going to get the same battery. Just stop thinking that we are. We all can't have the same battery. It's not going to work like that. We're all going to get different kinds of battery life, and this is just what it is. So face it, some people are getting one day. I get like two days consistently. Some people get three days. Some people get four days. It just depends on how long you use your device during one specific time of day and how it's sucking up and also what you're doing with it. If you run the camera a lot, you're going to drain the battery. If you're playing games a lot, you might not drain it as fast, but I can tell you Facebook is the number one killer of resources on any device, at least in my experience with people that I talk to. Facebook eats up all of their resources, which means it's draining the battery. Another reason that you might get poor battery life is the network. If you don't have a strong connection to your current cellular carrier, you're going to be working that battery over. There's too many things that go into battery. So when I'm telling you my battery stats, to me, it's worth it. That's good enough battery. If this phone just made it through a full 36 hours, like without being on the charger, which it does, that's good enough for me pretty much on almost any device depending on the price. Check that. So design, hardware, screen, performance, software, battery, price. Well, what's left? You know what it is. Cameras. These cameras, um, I think I, I always tell you guys, yeah, my last photo for a thumbnail, and I tell you all the time that I use pixel devices for thumbnails when I'm just trying to get a nice portrait shot. A lot of times it's the 6A over the 7, the 7 and the 7 Pro over the 5A, over the 4A, all my pixels. And it's not just that I'm picking this phone over them because they all have that pretty much tried and true, 6A backwards, have that tried and true 12 megapixel camera on the back. And it is, it's, it's, this, it's the same camera going all the way back. Folks, that camera setup has been the same and it works. This is why Google keeps putting it in there. So when I'm doing a thumbnail, it's probably the 6A if it's just a portrait shot. Now, it is not flawless. Edge detection on things like the black borders, like this looks like a good photo, and this is actually the 7 Pro video thumbnail, I believe, for is it really worth it? So this looks great from a distance, but when I zoom in, you'll see edge detection on that top left corner there kind of fade away. Just two little blotches right there, but still, I'm going to point it out. Sometimes edge detection on the pixels are not that great. And it's not something that is a deal breaker because when I tell you the cameras are worth it, you won't get better portrait shots from any other cell phone with the natural tones and just making you look like you, like a pixel. There's no change in hue. There's no change in color tones. I don't have to do anything. I can just turn on this camera, take a portrait shot, and boom, here we are. Just like that. You see what I'm saying? So... Folks, is this phone worth it? Absolutely. I was on a stream the other night, um, and they were talking about, someone asked to pose the question. I actually get asked this question all the time. Well, if you only could pick one, what you going to use? I'm pausing for dramatic effect. But it would be this. Now, I have the Pixel 7. I bought the Pixel 7. Google sent over the Pixel uh, 7 Pro. Here is the Pixel 7. This is my Pixel 7. Phenomenal device. I mean, I took all the skins off because I bought some new cases and stuff like that of this one. But the hardware on here is is it's just a little bit bigger than the 6A. But these are ultimately the same device, folks. You're just getting the new new in here. You're getting all the new goodies in here. And this, you're getting some new goodies they just carrying over from the 6 Pro and 6. So if you want the smallest new body style um, phone from Google, it's going to be this one. Um, the 6A is just a phenomenal, just a magnificent value to consumers. 
and I just have so many good things to say. I could go on and on and on and on. So check the boxes. Designing hardware, personally, I think it's, it's, it's totally worth it. Screen, features, options, performance, software, camera, battery, price, check, 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 all worth it. A few blemishes here on portrait shots of things for edge, edge detection. Sometimes it'll chop someone's ear off sometimes. But overall, folks, totally worth it. You can't get better value. And I, and I say that because people often bring up the 7 because the 7 is a beast. But it also costs $5.99 at retail, and this is $4.49. This is on sale at the moment for $4.99, and this is $2.99. Folks, it's a no-brainer. If these phones were to stay on sale, this is this this one this has the new Tensor chip, but I'm telling you, folks, performance is still phenomenal, phenomenal on this device when compared. I'm serious. I'm recording with the Pixel 7 Pro for those that might have not been paying attention. Yep, still going. Hasn't cut off yet. 17 minutes in, no problems. So it's your man Jay. Hope you guys enjoyed. Is it really worth it? Absolutely. One take Jake with 7 Pro. Phenomenal device. The 6A though is a beast mode device that can please the masses. I'll see you in the next video. Take care. Oh yeah, I'll try to leave some links down below so you can grab this for $2.99.